What's up, guys? So, you read the title, you know what we're talking about. And if you don't know, this is a movie about an old man whose wife passes away. And the old man is played by comedy legend Jerry Lewis. And it's all about how he copes with the death of his wife. Now, I'm going to tell you, about two-thirds of this movie is not good. It's just not good. I won't say it's the worst film ever, because the overall idea behind the movie, like, philosophically, is actually not a bad idea. But just the way that it was executed was just fucking terrible. The acting wasn't really that great, except for Kevin Pollock. He's the only one that actually did, like, a really good job. I don't know who the granddaughter is, but she did okay, not really. And there was just no chemistry between anybody. Like, the script kind of gave all the characters chemistry, but it just wasn't implemented properly. Like, there's a lot of flashbacks between Jerry Lewis and his wife, and they're like, like, verbally, like, it makes sense. Like, the things they're talking about would be something that, like, an old couple would talk about. But their line delivery just felt, like, dead to me for, like, the most part. And Jerry Lewis did a lot of overacting for a lot of parts. I still love the guy, but he was not good in this movie at all, really. And the pacing was just weird, like, nothing, I don't know, it just didn't flow properly. And there was one literally 30 second scene where it just felt like a horror movie. Like the cinematography made it look scary as fuck. Don't get me wrong though, if that one scene was in like a Halloween or like a Friday the 13th movie, it would have been awesome. It was actually look, it actually looked legitimately scary for 30 seconds. But why was it in the movie? I have no idea. And they don't really talk about it a whole lot, they just kind of like touch on the fact that Jerry Lewis's character was like a jazz piano player of some kind. But later on there's a scene in an old folks home where he's with three other dudes and they're all like air jazz playing and I'm just like, what in the fuck? am I watching? It's almost like the director went up to them and was just like, hey fellas, uh, let's just make this super fucking awkward for anybody below the age of 90. Like, I get what they were going for. They were kind of trying to have him, like, relive his glory days, and they joined in to just add to the fact that he's not alone. Like, I got that, but just the way they did it was just so fucking goofy. I wouldn't be caught dead doing anything that any of these four guys are doing ever. One of the guys just looks like he's coming the whole time. It's like, what? So that was atrocious. However, like every other bad film, this movie does have some redeemable qualities, and I actually identified with the core concept of the movie. Because including my stepfamily, I originally had six grandparents. So coping with loss is kind of an idea that I'm very familiar with. And I'm not saying they have to look for sympathy, but just, you know, people die and that's just part of life and it's hard to deal with sometimes. Especially when it's your spouse who you've been together for like 50 plus years or something like that. Like you're not going to find that again. And when you experience that loss, it is so severe. It changes everything everything. That's why I said I like the core idea of the movie, because it's like, what do you do at that point? And because me, like I'm sure millions of other people have, have seen it, it's a fairly identifiable concept. And again, the script is great. It does a pretty good job, not perfect, but it does a pretty decent job of illustrating what it's like after experiencing that big of a loss in your entire family. However, I would have liked it more if somebody would have actually brought up the idea of like broken heart syndrome, or at least begged the question, something. Because I know, you know, a few people that have had that happen to their grandparents, where they're, they're spouse dies and then just a few months later it's just they, they have a broken heart they can't live without him and this movie didn't really touch on that and I kind of wished it would have because that's like you know that's one of the things that might happen and like I said before Kevin Pollock is actually pretty good in the movie those first couple scenes are like eh but then after that it picks up and it's like oh sweet and despite the massive amount of flaws that this movie has I'm not gonna lie the last third to a quarter of the film was actually really good because a lot of the movie actually centers on Max trying to figure out whether or not his wife cheated on him at one point which is another cool concept is that closure really helps you just go forward mentally from then on. And that's another thing the writer did well. Like, the never-ending search for closure is a really, really, really deep concept. But it didn't really get delved in quite too deep, but it remained constant throughout the film, so I'll give the writer a little credit for that. And I know I said Jerry Lewis kind of sucked in the movie, but there is one part where he's kind of playing with his grandkids a little bit, and it was actually, like, believable, and it was kind of heartwarming. It's just like, oh, that's kind of cool. And this isn't a spoiler because it's in the trailer, but, like, there's a confrontation at the end that Max has, and this exchange is really, really cathartic, and it was really meaningful and it was like a lot of life and death concepts and it was like really good and the guy who was acting opposite Jerry Lewis did really good too like he was this like sardonic prick and it was just it was just a really 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 well done scene I thought and not spoiling anything but like the last minute of the story was like a really good like symbolic ending that I thought was really 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 good and just kind of overshadowed the rest of the movie I'm like why the fuck wasn't the rest of the movie this good that being said I don't think just because it had such a strong ending means that it justified the rest of the movie because I thought to myself right after I left I'm like wow that was a really strong ending but do I want to go see it again? And the answer was fuck no. Core concept? Brilliant. Movie? Not that great. So for rating, I think I'm gonna throw it out at like a 3.8. Eight. I don't like giving bad reviews to movies, but, like, I gotta call it like I see it, you know? If this movie comes out on Netflix, though, like, watch the first ten minutes just so you know what it's about, and then just fast forward to, like, the last half hour of the movie, because you're not really not missing a whole lot. Alright, guys, that's my two cents for the day. Hope it was worth it. If you saw the movie, may God have mercy on your soul. But drop me a comment and let me know what you thought. Other than that, like, subscribe, do all that other shit, and I'll catch you guys next time.